And it's your buddy, Uncle Bruce here. Welcome to August 25th, 2022. It's Thursday and a lot is going on this morning um, and we're getting different things clicking through here. Um, yeah, I don't think the market's going to do too well here. Um, right now, we're up a little. Um, the Dow is up 71 points in the pre-market. SP's up 20. NASDAQ up is 79 points. Not a lot. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a slight little, you know, whatever. Uh, crude oil up 19 cents. Um, we, uh, we are, uh, I, <clears throat> I am watching uh, a lot of stuff today that is uh, not looking good. Um, okay. Um, I'm watching these, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm following these uh, experts on the stock market. Um, and, uh, you know, <clears throat> they're, um, they're giving us their, you know, their thoughts and they're, they're, they're having interviews with key people. And r right now, most of the, the television networks are, are all about Jackson Hole. We're, we're in Jackson Hole and we're, we're covering what's happening here. We're going to listen to uh, the, 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 the head of the Fed, uh, Mr. Powell, tomorrow is going to give a speech. And uh, they're all jazzed up about this. Uh, they're missing the big picture. Um, and so is the Fed. Uh, <laughs> I tell you, uh, this can happen from time to time. Um, uh, it's not easy being the chairman of the Federal Reserve. It's not easy being a governor of the Federal Reserve of the United States. It's not easy being part of the Bank of Canada. It's not easy being part of the Bank of England. It's not easy being part of the ECB, the European Central Bank. These, This is tough work. Uh, this is stressful work. You're trying to guess with whatever information you can get your hands on what the state of the economy is, wherever you're located, what the state of the economy is going to be, and what kind of a uh, what kind of impact your policies at your central bank might have on the population that is you know, that you're in charge of or that you're trying to handle here and for powell he's trying to handle um he's trying to handle basically uh cats that can't be herded and there's the there's the problem right now you cannot herd pussy cats they're going their own way they do whatever they want and you can't beat them into submission because they scratch and they bite you um pussy cats are a nightmare dogs are easy to control but pussy cats no and we've got way too many divergent things happening at the same moment and all of these cats don't understand that they all have the same problem in their own unique way. And so they're trying to solve it their own way rather than teaming up and working as a unit, like a pride, a lion pride would in uh, Kenya or in the Serengeti or whatever. Um, the problem with this is for us, because you're asking yourself, why should I care? It, the problem for us is that this is going to prolong the nightmare of a economic pullback, a recession, uh, a, uh, <clears throat> you know, whatever, a bear market situation, whatever word you want to give the economy of the day, of the day, fine. But we are, we are sitting on a bunch of crap right now and watching a bunch of stuff happen that doesn't have to be happening, but is. And it's going to affect a lot of us and it's going to affect a lot of people we know um, who have no clue what's coming at them. Because again, to be fair to all, um, there are 144 people listening to me yap right now, not 14,400 or 144,000 or 1.4 million. There's 144 now, 148 of you here. And I'm telling you what I see going on. And half of you are going, oh, this guy is just so damn boring. The other half are fascinated. Uh, and so the message isn't getting out. <laughs> and, 
if you watch CNBC and you watch Bloomberg and you watch Fox Business and you watch CNN Business and you watch you, you watch whatever you're watching, wherever in the world you are, okay, BBC and and uh, I don't know wherever you're looking, you're going to get your regional stuff and you're going to get the info that the producers and directors of these networks think you ought to know. And if you're watching me, you're going to hear from me with what I think you ought to know. And somebody's right. Somebody's wrong. Maybe we're all right. Maybe we're all wrong. But many of you are only getting regional coverage of news that pertains only to your country, maybe. And that's it. And these folks who are telling you this are trying to tell you this is all you need to know and and you're now up to date on everything you have to worry about and this is wrong uh, because you cannot cannot go around the world with blinders on and you know if you're if you're going around like this you're you're done for you are going to get blindsided because you've set yourself up for it and i'm not talking about you guys watching me i'm not i'm not uh, this is not Bruce yelling at his viewers. This is Bruce saying to his viewers, the investors out there everywhere else are oblivious. A high number of them are oblivious to what is happening globally. And they're so focused on their own little stories, their own little plays, that they are going to get blindsided with some really ugly stuff. And they're going to go, well, why didn't anyone tell me about this? I didn't know this was going on. And um, I, I can't help them. You can't help them. It's just the way the world kind of works. As connected as we are, this is the amazing thing about this planet. Now, you know, in the 1950s, you wanted to uh, stay on top of the financial world news. Uh, you had to be an employee of a senior. You had to be a senior employee of a bank at like head branch. Uh, and you had to have access to uh, news tickers. You had to be. You had to. You had to have access to Associated Press info. You had to be maybe an employee of the New York Stock Exchange or a, a brokerage firm. Uh, you know, with connections to the exchange and, and and to all the economic news. That's the only way you would read the New York Times. What you'd read the uh, Washington, the uh, Financial Post. You'd read all the periodicals that came out daily. Uh, and that would be sometimes, you know, 24-hour news old, but that's as quick as it got out. Today, we're in this in incredibly connected world. And I'm talking to people here on this computer from this secret location in Calgary uh, that are scattered all over the planet. Um, and people from all over the planet can watch and gather information in from any source they want. If you want to read the New York Times, you can do that from... Tokyo. You can do it from uh, Dakar. You can do it from Helsinki. Uh, you don't have to be in New York. You, you don't have to be in America. You can read. I can read the Times of London right now if I want. I, I can see the headlines that's going on in, uh, going on in Berlin. But we don't. And that's the reality of it. We we have access to the world media. We have access to world economic news. Uh, through all kinds of sources, but we have our little favorites and then we stay there and then we kind of get all nice and comfy. And we feel like we're connected and we rely on our favorite providers to give us the outside scoop. But many of your favorites don't. And, and that's what I notice on, uh, you know, certain entities. Um, here's, here's something big we got to worry about. Here's something really big we got to worry about. Maxwell, thank you for that PayPal donation, send me your email. I'll get you four lessons right on. Um, here's something that's really a, a problem. I'm just going to put up, by the way, my PayPal location there if anybody wants to make a donation for four classes for the price of three. Um, in, the, in Europe right now, there's a big problem. Uh, back in March when the uh, Russians invaded Ukraine, prices of natural gas took off in Europe because Europeans who had been in denial, politicians in, in uh, senior people in Ukraine were convinced there's no way the Russians are coming in. They're just doing some exercises like they always do. The Americans are screaming through the world media, the Russians are going to invade Ukraine. And uh, 
Republicans or, you know, going Biden has lost it. Um, uh, other allies are going, are you sure? Really? I, I'm not sure. The, the Putin's not going to be that stupid, is he? And then he showed up and, and in comes 150,000 Russians. And Putin was convinced because the West was so dysfunctional that he could take Kiev in five days. He could take Kiev over in five days, kick out, uh, uh, grab Zelensky, uh, bring him to a gulag in Siberia. Uh, you'll never hear from him again and uh, install a couple of Russian puppets to run the whole thing. And, and it's all great. We're going to have referendums in, in Ukraine to vote on whether they want to join Russia. And then the vote will be 99%. Yeah, we all want to be Russians. And it's all going to be great. And so he misread it. Um, Ukrainians misread what the Russians were going to do. Many allies and many political uh, opponents of all of the Biden administration totally poo-pooed it. And surprise, surprise, like Gomer Pyle would say, surprise, 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 the Russians moved on in and created havoc. But surprise, surprise, the Ukrainians put up resistance and the West got its act together, the NATO countries, and started supplying Ukrainians with bullets and other instruments to negate the Russian advance. And here we are six months later in a quagmire. Okay, well, gas, natural gas went stupid. It rose to records that, that had never been seen before. And then it backed off over a few weeks and months as it, the West and the world realized, oh, wow, look, uh, the Russians are still selling gas to Europe. And um, um, the Europeans haven't cut off the Russians for their natural gas and uh, summer anyway. And, uh, um, you know, Europeans will just find other ways to get energy into Europe to kind of get through it. And so things calmed down until about a month ago. And uh, the realization starts to sink in with the shutdowns of these pipelines and then the Russians cutting down how much gas they're sending to the Europeans. Europeans are going, you know what, these Russians might actually cut us off. They might actually not supply us with natural gas, which is like 48% of the gas we use across all of Western Europe, 300 and something, 50 million people. Um, what are we going to do if they cut us off? Uh, we, we got a problem. And the Russians are sitting back going, <laughs> you guys are so stupid because uh, <laughs> we cut back production of natural gas and we sell you one quarter of what we used to sell you. But the price we're getting for the quarter that we are selling you is 10 times higher than what it was when we sold you all the gas we could send you. We here in Russia are getting more money from you stupid Europeans by selling you just a quarter of the gas than, than what we used to. I mean, we have more cash coming into our coffers to pay our soldiers bonus money to take the risk of going into Ukraine and getting blown to bits because our population is so desperate to survive, we can bribe our people to become part of the army. That's how much, we have 250 million people here. We can just keep throwing bodies in there because we don't care. And you Europeans are funding it. You are funding our war effort beautifully because we're now at a price of natural gas. It is so high now that if you convert it into an oil barrel equivalent, experts who are in this business are saying it's about, give or take, 550 bucks a barrel for oil prices. The natural gas price is now so high in Europe that it equals 550 bucks a barrel equivalent in oil. Just to kind of bring this to something we can relate to. And there's no guarantee that Europe will have enough natural gas to survive the winter for all of its factories, all of its buildings, all of its populations, schools, hospitals, the entire thing. They don't quite yet know if they're going to make it. And so there may well be rationing of natural gas, which means the electricity grid is in trouble in Europe. And this is where the disconnect comes. You've got to understand the big picture. Europe produces electricity just like we do in North America. We have hydro, which is water running through it. We have geothermal, which is virtually nothing, solar, wind, nuclear, we have oil-fired plants, coal-fired plants, and natural gas-fired plants. And in Europe, 
natural gas power plants are everywhere because it's a cleaner burning fuel than oil or coal. And since it was relatively available in bulk from Russia and everywhere else, the Europeans built all kinds of natural gas fired power plants. And they phased away, closed down and eliminated a lot of coal fired plants because coal is a dirty, dirty fuel when you burn it. And they're trying to clean up the environment over there. They're way ahead of North America. The problem now with natural gas being cut back, there are power plants in Europe that are not producing near the electricity they can because they don't have the gas coming in. The other problem is the cold fire plants that are still operating in Europe aren't getting the coal they require either because of the drought situation and low river levels in Europe. Coal can't move by barge as efficiently and there's supply chain problems there. So electricity production is down in Europe during the hottest summer recorded in what, 200 years, whatever the number. It's a mess in the summer. We haven't even started the winter. And so here we have this nightmare. Uh, you got to ask yourself, yeah, Bruce, I still don't understand why I have to give a crap about this. I'm in Texas, man. We got uh, electricity here and I'm in Oklahoma. I'm in Alberta. You know, here in North America, it's great. Uh, we got oil all over the place. We got natural gas everywhere. I'm talking like Russ Perot. Yeah. And so you know, it's fine. Got nothing to worry about. Everything's fine. Everything's great. Well, not really, because we trade with Europe a lot. We buy a lot of their stuff. They buy a lot of our stuff. And we're pals. We're allies. And the allies are having a problem that one of the two allies is going into a major economic meltdown. Europe is in big trouble. And look at the euro. Do you want to see a little bit of a, a little hint of what's going on? You take a look at how the euro is doing out there and you'll quickly figure out that the euro is slumping against the U.S. dollar. It's under parity. The British pound has slumped in the last couple of weeks. Interest rates have surged dramatically. Uh, the U.S. 10 year is 3.11 percent. It was 2.5 a couple of weeks ago. We're going higher on interest rates. And of course, guess who's going to speak? on Friday in Jackson Hole. The man himself, Mr. Powell, is he going to announce that uh, we've made a mistake, we've raised rates too far too fast, and we're going to now start cutting interest rates? He's not going to announce that. His entire game plan is to fight inflation. And the Europeans are looking inflation right in their face because the electric bill of every homeowner in Europe, every apartment operator, all condos, all businesses, all governments, anyone using natural gas as a gas or using electricity that is produced by coal and natural gas, these prices are surging and they're not going up seven or eight percent. They're going up 30, 40, 50 percent. There are homeowners in your in the UK, the number one topic in the United Kingdom utility bills their number one concern is utility bills because they are skyrocketing one in six homes in america right now are behind in utility bills and we don't have this problem we have a little bit of a problem in north america some of you've noticed your electric rates going up some of you notice your natural gas prices going up not like in europe but it's happening in America as well, and Canada, and Mexico, and South America, and Africa, and Asia. It's a global nightmare, and it's not stopping, and it's not going to go away. And so economics are suspect. We're all wondering, geez, what's going to happen? A couple of other little things for you to think about. Um, I read an article this morning that I found absolutely fascinating and i haven't seen it discussed on any network anywhere maybe you have i am i can't watch them all but uh here's something i hadn't 
hadn't occurred to me and i think i know everything <laughs> yeah like i know everything um retailers u.s retailers um canadian retailers but this is about u.s retailers um i've been telling you guys uh, for months now that um outfits like target and uh, other major retailers have got inventory problems in in that they are receiving inventory too late for the season that we're in so in the case of target and and home depot and lowe's and costco and others some of these guys have their very own ships that move containers of product just for them uh, costco is one uh, walmart is another then there are the retailers that uh, rely on on uh, contracted uh, container ships and then there are the rest of the retailers who just deal with uh, wholesalers and uh, they say we need our barbecues and our lawn chairs and our, our our patio umbrellas and all the outdoor furniture we need that in our stores around uh march uh, february march so that we're ready for april may june to sell all this stuff for july 4th july june july august the summer season we have people have got to have their brand new barbecues by april in the backyard so as soon as those warm days start to show up they're putting the steaks and burgers and hot dogs on those barbecue units and everything to go around it and this year they were late and I told you this a few months ago and, and a number of you have said to me Bruce I cannot believe the deal I got at this store or at this store or at this store or at this store I bought what used to, would normally run two thousand dollars for my entire patio outfit for 800 bucks I got it for 60 percent off I got my for half off I got 70 percent off this is happening for everything not just springtime summertime stuff there are retailers out there who are sitting on Christmas stuff Christmas stuff that was supposed to be sold last Christmas that arrived late they never unpacked it it it's still in containers those big metal containers that are on ships that have been placed on the on top of transport trailers and these transport trailers these trucks have been moved to parking lots secured parking lots and are waiting for this Christmas now this inventory has been delayed a year there's a retailer out there with over 50 five zero transfer tractor trailer loads of Christmas stuff sitting in storage across America where their distribution centers are located or near their distribution centers in storage waiting to deliver Christmas stuff in about a month from now month and a half September October from last year this inventory has been sitting in containers for a year in America that was supposed to have been sold last year this is how bad it is all right um storage facilities across the United States that are contracted by gigantic and regional retailers across the U.S. are totally filled up with goods wrong timed goods but nonetheless goods and are holding it until the retailer says okay ship it to me now I'll take it now uh rental rates at storage facilities that handle huge bulk amounts of product rates are up 21 percent this year to rent them this is why inflation is everywhere you think about a retailer paying 21 percent more money to store stuff for a longer period of time than they would have thought which is also a problem and then it arrives at their store they do their mathematics and go that item that used to sell for $19.99, we have to sell it for 
because we paid two dollars and twenty cents in extra storage fees to store that thing among the millions of these things that we got in all of our stores we now have to pay to sell it for 25 bucks that's a 25 percent increase in price not 8.2 none of that kind of stuff um the storage facilities across the united states and canada are now overflowing with tractor trailers that have been parked at their on their parking facilities because the warehouses are full because they're being asked by retailers and others uh, wholesalers and retailers are contacting the storage unit saying look uh, i got another 200 storage uh, 200 tractor trailers that i gotta park you know 200 more units i need to park them uh, for a month, two months, three months, and then I'll move them. And the storage outfit guys, they're private enterprise people. They're not stupid. They're here to make money. They're going, okay, yeah, you, I can't plug it in. I can't, if it's refrigerated stuff, I can't help you. No, it's not food. It's dry goods. It's, it's, it's lawn chairs. It's uh, fake Christmas trees. It's w whatever the hell it is. I just need it parked. <coughs> you know, I need to park 50 trailers near Denver. I need 50 trailers near Minneapolis. I need 35 trailers near Seattle. I need 75 near New York. Whatever. And these storage guys are going, oh, okay, I can take I can take 100 units. We'll we'll put you in our storage unit, which is fenced off. It's a secure facility with 24-hour security. And we've got insurance on everything. You've got insurance and everything. So in case there's a break in or whatever, we're covered. And we'll we'll store this stuff for you. They are running out of space. These guys have, have run out of locations to do it. The other problem is the trucking companies are going, hey, we have a problem. <laughs> we got all these guys with trucks. The trailers are all uh, tied up. Uh, we we are getting calls from Long Beach and LA and 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 we're getting calls in Galveston, Texas and we're getting calls out of Tampa, we're getting calls out of the East Coast to come and get come and get containers of stuff that's coming off the ships all the time. We're running out of trailers to get it because the trailers are parked all over the United States with containers on top of them. Uh waiting to be offloaded we got this problem and so it's it's this backup thing it's it the, the entire system is choking up and the retailers are sitting you come into a retail store uh you know come into a target and whatever what do you see clearance sale clearance deals 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 they're trying to offload merchandise so they can make room for the merchandise that is coming in and they're trying to offload what you don't want right now. Do you want to buy a barbecue right now for this winter in Minnesota? No, you don't. Uh, you wanted to buy a barbecue in March, April for the summer. You don't want to buy a barbecue in late August, September for the next six months in Minnesota. It's that's what are you gonna do with it? Put it in your garage and let it stand there and get dusty. You that's not what you want to do. The retailers out there are going, we have this stuff. We can't repackage it and put it back into storage. We got this stuff. We got to get rid of it at cost or less, which hurts the margins of these retailers. And this is why target stock dropped 10 days in a row. The realization from the analysts are, oh my God, one of the largest retailers in the entire United States of America, an absolute monster mover of inventory. They're sitting on the wrong stuff and it isn't like $10 million of wrong stuff. It's billions of dollars of wrong stuff at the wrong time. And the stuff they need that they're supposed to have in their stores hasn't landed yet. It's behind because of the backup of everything else. And now we're, we're running into a huge nightmare of storage cost, transportation costs, logistical nightmares. This is continuing just in the USA. <laughs> Apparently, the way it works is that retailers like um, uh, like uh, uh, Target and Macy's, for example, they deep discount product they have in their systems to get it out so they can make room for the product they want. 
But if they have additional inventory, which they do, what they do then is they know we can't take delivery of everything that had been ordered. So we have to offload some of this inventory. What do you do now? You offload it to the secondary level of retailers, which are outfits known as Ross stores and Burlington stores. Have you heard of those? They're everywhere. Your famous factory outlet malls are drowning in secondary seller type outfits. Even brand name stores have factory outlet stores all over America. They're all over Canada. And we consumers have been hoodwinked into thinking, oh, this is where we get deals. Yeah, this is where you get deals on last year's crap. The stuff that they don't bring in anymore. The last of the line, the last of the shoe styles, and the last of the dresses from last year and last season and so on. You go to these stores to buy what you think is 30, 40, 50, 60% off retail on last year's stuff. Now it's piling up to be two-year-old stuff, one-and-a-half-year-old stuff on top of the one-year-old stuff. And Ross stores and Burlington stores and all the other liquidator-type outfits are drowning in merchandise as well. Because they don't just take, they don't just wait for Macy's to send stuff to them. They don't just wait for Target or all the other players. They buy their own stuff worldwide clearance merchandise these guys are masters at liquidation product your dollaramas your dollar stores all of your deep discount low, the winners of the world um name them all you know them all if you're a shopper you know which one i'm talking about which ones i'm talking about they are everywhere and they're all drowning in merchandise that we don't want right now I don't need to buy springtime items in August and September. What do mom and dads want to buy right now? Back to school stuff. That's what they want right now. What's the next thing? Halloween stuff. What's the next stuff? Christmas stuff. That's the order in which this goes. And everything is screwed up. Uh, that is happening behind the scenes of your target store and your uh, your favorite uh, ma massive retailers the, the 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 management of these companies which are not located at the stores you shop at the management of these companies at head office are open going 24 7 over there and they are in an absolute organizational nightmare and this is costing them gazillions of bucks and it's it, it, there are people who are winning but then there are those who are losing, and th this is a an absolute mess. And consumers are getting upset because they can't find what they want when they want it. And this is not, not a good thing. Um, something else I read today, uh, as we're into the last 24 minutes before we open 26 minutes, um, pension funds, North American pension funds. I read something today that, again, thought was pretty interesting. Did you know that North American pension funds manage over six trillion dollars of assets six trillion with a t of assets are handled by north american based pension funds i'm not talking about mutual funds I'm not talking about hedge funds I'm not talking about etfs just pension funds six trillion dollars to give you an idea how big some of these are the california state um teachers pension fund the teachers of california's pension fund is 312 billion dollars a third of a trillion is handled by those guys they have unbearable pressure on them they are dealing with teachers that every year retire from age of course they have every year new teachers joining the union and becoming teachers because of the turnover of natural life. We keep having kids and they get sent to school. There better be some people there running this place. And so $312 billion is under management by this pension fund management group to ensure retirement benefits for those who are retired, 
and to ensure the money coming in from all the deductions to keep growing that fund to allow it to pay out the pensions of people who live longer today than they did 50, 60 years ago. There's a lot of teachers who joined the teachers' ranks. They became teachers in the 70s and the 80s. And those who were teaching well back then are now in their 70s, 80s, and 90s, and they're still getting their money because they're outliving the time frame that everyone thought they would be living. The average life expectancy in the United States and Canada has risen up until a couple of years ago dramatically into the 80s, where it used to be into the 60s. And so these funds, whether they are teacher pension funds, police and firefighter, government employees, I don't care who they are, $6 trillion is out there to handle the retirees who are retired and those who are about to retire and those who are in the workforce adding to the money to someday be retired themselves. The Ontario Municipal Employees Pension, this is the province of Ontario and Canada, $90 billion. You know, little old Canada has this one pension of $90 billion, And that isn't, there are many more. Humongous. About 8%, 8.7% of all that $6 trillion is in real estate. And the story today that I read after figuring out these statistics was that pension funds are dumping office buildings big time. They are dropping their inventory of office buildings by like 25 to 30 percent or more from their portfolios because it was a good idea through the 80s and 90s and 2000s and 2010s. It was a really good idea to buy office towers in Manhattan, Boston, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Toronto, Montreal, because office towers were appreciating in value because the land they were sitting on was going up in value. And these rents were going up all the time from companies renting office space in office towers. And pension funds were making a nice return on their office towers until two years ago. And then something happened. And today, what's going on? There are viewers of this channel that either themselves used to go to office towers a few years ago and don't anymore, or know someone or know many more people than just someone who aren't going to go downtown anymore to these big office towers to go to work. You have friends and relatives and associates all over the place, and you're finding out how many of your friends, relatives, and associates are deciding to retire because they're of a certain age or they've decided to work from home or they've decided to switch careers and work near home rather than commute to an office tower downtown. And so Manhattan and Toronto and downtown Calgary and downtown Vancouver and Seattle and Frisco and Dallas and Houston and on and on and on and on and on we go. Is they're not the same anymore. They're not as cramped with people in office towers like it used to be up until 2019. It's all changed. And so pension funds are backing off and offloading uh, office towers to other, other buyers. And they're moving into other areas. They're not getting out of real estate. They're shifting real estate investing. They're buying infrastructure. They're buying up hospital buildings that are and that are leased by health companies because the pension fund people have figured out you always need hospitals and even if you want to work from home people get older every day no matter where they live and hang out so if you're not going to hang out in office towers you're hanging out in your house you're getting older every day sooner or later you're going to need to come into a hospital for something sooner or later the odds are and the pension funds have figured out, why don't we buy hospitals and health clinics? And why don't we buy um, uh, other government buildings that governments are leasing out? Because governments are sitting there going, we don't want to own um, uh, our own buildings anymore and run them. We'd rather lease buildings as we need them. It's a lot cheaper for the taxpayer than, than, than having all this, these uh, assets that we have to maintain and whatnot. We'll just give it, 
we'll just rent instead. It's called sale leaseback. So we're selling our structure and then we're leasing it for the next 25 years or 15 years. Um, it just more, makes more economic sense at this point in time. Well, these pension funds are happy to be the buyers. They're happy to be the buyers of these buildings because they're buying the land the building is sitting on as well. And they all know, yeah, you, you're renting from us for 15 years. Yeah, well, in, in year 16, you got a problem. Uh, the problem you have is you don't have a rental agreement anymore and you need a place to run your organization from. And if you're a hospital, you need a hospital. If you're a government, you need government facilities. And we have the money, the capital that keeps coming in to be able to maintain these structures, keep renting them to you for good money, and enjoy the appreciation of the structure over time. And we'll keep expanding. We'll build you another one. If, if in with five years to go in your lease, you tell us that you need a new facility five years from now that is double the size of the facility you've got, you got to get out of this one into a larger one. Guess what we have? We have land all over the place that we've bought as well. And we will custom build for you your facility for another 15-year lease. No problem at all. Because the old facility that you're going to leave, we have five years to figure out what to do with it. And we know what we're going to do with it. We're probably going to just alter it a lot and subdivide it into smaller chunks and lease it out to a lot, just a lot of smaller clients, which again, we deal with. Or we'll gut the whole damn thing and we'll build to suit a brand new structure for a new 15, 20 year custom lease for somebody else. We have the cash to do that. That is the pension fund mentality. They're here forever. And their customers, their pensioners, pensioners, they die, they get born, they go to work, they retire, they die, the system turns around and around. And that's what's going on with pension funds on the real estate side of things. Quite interesting how they are shifting out of office towers because you guys have decided you want to write options full time and not go to work anymore. And that's something. But they're gonna they're gonna service your your doctor at the hospital. You can visit the property there whenever you're ready. Fascinating stuff going on. Absolutely fascinating what's happening out there. Um, we're still showing a gain on these markets at the moment, but it's slipping. The gains are slipping. We're up 39 on the Dow, 18 on S&P, 80 on NASDAQ. Um, initial and continuing unemployment claims decline in mid-August. The U.S. labor market, Canadian labor market, and other labor markets are very, doing very well right now. Uh, unemployment is very low. Jobs are plentiful. The problem is that in the U.S. in particular, the U.S., um, the last probably, well, five, six years and, and maybe beyond, it has been almost impossible, not quite, but close to impossible for um, more people to come to America legally and get a green card and or um, be able to become U.S. citizens because politics is such that unless you're uh, from certain, um, certain countries, you're not getting in. And if you're from certain third world countries, of which there are many, you're definitely not getting in. It, it, there are the numbers, there are the so-called set numbers in place, but they have been cut back. They haven't been increased in, in some cases, decades. And so in America, there has been a resistance, politically resistance, to allow in new immigrants. And it's costing America invisibly uh, in a way, economically. And that is the workforce, the number of people eligible to work in America has topped out. But the need for services from America is, has gone up. A number of people who are eligible to work that are classified as in the workforce are not able to work in the USA and in Canada because they've either uh, come down with the virus and have got lingering medical issues that prevent them from 
getting back to work. It's a physical job that they had, and they are only at 50% physical capacity. Theoretically, they're able to work, but physically they're not. Uh, there are those who are completely able to go to work, but are now stuck at home to care for ill family members, especially on the female side of the equation. No question about it. Um, and then you have um, uh, certain industries out there who were notorious for really screwing with their employees for decades and were allowed to legally do it. And these employees have grown a stiff back and have gotten stronger and have decided, screw you, buddy. I'm not working for you. A lot of Americans and Canadians were finding that they couldn't land a full-time job because of their circumstances. They were uh, uh, non-high school graduates. They had, uh, they had a criminal record from when they were 18 and they're now 33 and they're single parents and they couldn't get hired by a zillion companies because uh, if you were caught with a, with a, a joint when you were 18, you've got a forever criminal record. And in some states, you're doomed for poverty. You are doomed to poverty for the rest of your life because you're obviously a drug user and you're unreliable. Um, these folks were, were kept down by employers who would not make them full-time employees and give them benefits. And they knew it. They knew that if they only employ them for 18 hours a week, you only got to pay them the minimum wage, which is $7.25 or $6.75 an hour, depending on where we are. And the maximum profits flow right to the corporation at the very top. All that has changed. And now people can get full-time jobs today that never dreamt they would be able to get a full-time job. And they can't believe how much money they're getting paid and the benefits that they're getting. And finally, for the first time, they are being treated like a valuable member of society. And they can contribute to society because they're paying taxes. <laughs> they actually are making enough money where they're getting deductions. Uh, it's a whole turnaround. These folks will never go back to those crap jobs with those employers, some of which are the largest employers of America. They will never go back because they will never forget and forgive. Can you blame them? <laughs> I wouldn't. Um, and so there's help wanted signs all over the place. And the funny thing is, um, uh, back in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, when I was a kid, um, it was expected when you were in high school that you would work at the soda fountain shop. You would work at the McDonald's. You'd work at a Burger King. You'd be flipping burgers and working behind the counter and making your minimum wage. And uh, that would be uh, your work experience before you went to college. That was the way it was. We have Americans today and Canadians today who's, who pa the parents say to their kids, there's no damn way I'm letting you work in places like this. Not a chance. I'm not letting you work there. No way. You're going to get a job with uh, a family connection. You're going to get a white collar uh, part-time job um, for your resume. Because to get into college today, you uh, claim that your work experience is this, this, and this soda, soda fountain stuff. Um, you might not get into that Ivy League school that we want you to get into. Your, you know, your your plan, the plan for you, whether you like it or not, is to make you a white collar successful em employee of a law firm or an accounting firm or a brokerage company or a bank, and uh, we've got to get you work experience. So you're going to go to summer camps. You're going to go to college summer camps. We're going to pay through the nose for this stuff. You're not getting paid to go there. We're paying to send you there so that your, uh, your CV or whatever it's called when you apply for school shows all of this experience so that you can get into this Ivy League school. This is the separation between classes. I mean, not school classes. I mean life classes. The high-end, high-demographic individual the upper middle class, the middle class, the lower middle class, and then those who have no nothing. This is the separation that's happening all over the place. And it is infecting the entire economy. And we're finding right now the beginnings of the nightmare that we're experiencing where there are employers going, I can't find a kid to make French fries for my restaurant. I can't find a dishwasher. I can't find a server. 
And the reason I can't find them is because the, the uh, traditional um, um, area of, of workers that I used to rely on were high school and university kids. They're not coming in here for those jobs. They're not coming in here. They're too good for this. Rightly or wrongly, they're too good for this. And I can't hire the other people that I used to hire. You know those other people? The ones that arrived here crossing the Rio Grande on mom's hip and have no papers? I can't hire those kids. I, I can't hire those people because there are federal agents all over the place who are going to find me unbelievably and arrest my employees on site. We got that problem. And so what's happening while well, we're closing the restaurant and we're only driving only operating the drive through or we open the restaurant from 10 in the morning until four in the afternoon and then we shut it down and we only do the drive through we're cutting back our double shifts we're this is the continual deterioration of the economic system that's going on all over the place and amazon uh, they're going to have an even bigger problem this year and next year getting their 250,000 people for Christmas time to work part time. That pool is drying up. They're aging out. Uh, there are a lot of folks in RVs who love working 10 weeks of the year uh, for Amazon or, or for whoever, UPS or what have you. The problem is that those folks are retired, elderly, and they're getting older every year and there isn't a wave behind them to replace them. And uh, this is catching up with North America. We're aging out. Canada's aging out. USA is aging out. UK, Japan is really aging out. Um, in our own way, in our own systems, all of Europe, we are aging out. And we don't have the young. And we're not allowing the newbies in to replace the, the workers because of politics. And so this deterioration is happening as well. I, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm just observing what's going on in a whole bunch of scenarios all over the place. At the moment, the market is up 39 points because the market isn't paying attention to this. The market is kind of going, well, you know, maybe the Fed will ease off on interest rates and the markets can go higher. Uh, I don't know how you magically make that happen. <laughs> I don't know how companies magically make more money because the fed uh is doing this or doing that or doing this or that. it's not going to happen at all it's just not it's just not going to happen the reality is in the next three to five to ten years north american standard of living is going to drop for most north americans especially the bottom half and this is the ugly part about it the uh, the bottom 60 percent of north american economic north americans are really going to get it they're really going to get it and the top 40%, uh, 20 of those, the bottom 20% of those are going to hang on to what they've got. And then the top 20% are going to reap the rewards of, uh, of um, being at the high end. The problem is that they're going to be upset. Uh, I can't find someone to mow my grass consistently. I, I'm having trouble with um, uh, getting my car washed properly or I, I, I can't get my... Um, I can't get parts for my RV or whatever the issue. There's, it's the lower end that's going to be the problem. Those who deliver the services to the higher end, it's going to be an issue. Those who are billionaires, no problem. No, no problem at all. They can afford, always afford to outpay everybody else for the service that they need. Uh, but that's the you know, top 1%. The other 99, you know, where are you in that? Welcome option writers to the show. Uh, welcome option writers to this program. Welcome option writers to this market. Boy, is it perfect. If you're an option writer, have you landed in heaven or what? Oh, my God. Uh, this is great. Uh, you don't have to care if the market is up 20 points or not. You don't have to care at all. You don't have to care what inflation is doing. You really don't. Um, you don't have to care about unemployment. You don't have to care about um, a lot of stuff. All you have to worry about, all you have to pay attention to are options you're writing. Because you don't have to fear upside on, on a market going away from you. But even if it did, it doesn't matter. As an option writer, you don't care if the market's going higher or not. You're going to write options anyway. You're going you're gonna to roll over options anyway. You're going to make market money no matter what direction the market goes. It's like the casino owner in Las Vegas looking down on the floor of all the slot machines they've got and all the blackjack tables and all the roulette wheels and all the other stuff. And they're just folding their arms going, 
here they are. How many we how many we got today? How many gamblers are on the floor? That's what the casino manager wants to know. How many we got? Are we busy? Uh, boy, the marketing department sure brought a lot of players this weekend to Las Vegas. That's great. The casino floors are going to make more money. You are managing your casino floor because you're writing options on stocks that option players are desperate to play with. And you're the liquidator. You're the one offering liquidity to a desperate market that is desperately trying to find a win. There are people playing the options market that are using credit card cash advance money to buy options. This is the bitter reality. I'm telling you the truth. There are people out there who have been laid off. They've been injured on the job. They're not feeling well. They got a, they get a disability pension every month. Uh, they've been rolling over their assets. They're, they're just trying to get by. There are people who are just trying to get by and they're trying to find a win and they're trying to find a quick buck. And there are millions of them, not 10 or 20 or 30 people. I'm talking millions. And then there are millions of gamblers who have full-time jobs and have full-time careers. And they realize, and they know deep down inside, they know they've got a glass ceiling as far as where they're going and they can't get over and past it. Uh, they also have issues that will prevent them from going further in their career. Whatever those issues are from many years ago to what have you, family problems, I don't care. There are gamblers out there who are looking for a hit. They're looking for a place where they can go, where they're not judged by anybody else. They're anonymous to everybody else, where they can come and play and try to make some money. Now, some of these folks go to DraftKings and all these other gambling sites, these on, these on, uh, you know, these, these gambling sites on these things. And they bet on baseball games and they bet on this and they bet on that. And they drop 50 bucks here, a hundred bucks here, 500 bucks. They're addicted to sports events. Oh, great. But then there are those who have these just like you have these, but they don't have the wherewithal, the patience, the inclination and the determination to become option writers. What they are are option gamblers. They don't want to understand how options are created because they couldn't care less. They look at a stock option as a lottery ticket. They look at a stock option as a way to game the system. They look at a stock option like a better looks at a horse at Anita, Santa Anita racetrack. They look at the they look at GameStop shares and they say to themselves, can a stock go from 3271 where it is right now to $35 by tomorrow or by next Friday or a month from now? Is it possible that GameStop, which fluctuates all the time, could I catch a wave where I buy stock options on GameStop and the stock politely would go up $5 a share in a certain time frame and I can buy a contract here and sell it here or I buy five contracts or 10, or 30, or 100. It depends on how big their portfolio is. And it ranges from one contract to a 1,000 contracts. They're everywhere, every size imaginable. These people aren't stupid. They're smart people. They're, many are college graduates. Many are master's degree graduates. They're very smart people. But they are in a situation where they do not want to be involved in the stock itself. They don't want to own it. They just want to ride the wave. And whether they're riding Apple or whether they're riding Cisco or HBQ or whether they're riding SoFi or whether they're riding GameStop, it doesn't matter. They have thousands of stocks to pick from, ETFs to pick from all over the place. They're looking for a hit. And they will gamble and gamble and gamble and gamble for years and years and years and years. And from time to time, they will score a touchdown. They will score a field goal. They will catch a safety once in a while. There are times where they will lose 5% of their money on a trade, 10% on a trade. They'll lose 30% on a trade, 50% on a trade. They'll lose it all on a trade. It runs the gamut. And these are the people that you are making a living off of easy money because you're writing options 
to gamblers who are prepared to take a complete 100% risk on their money. They could lose it all in one day, in a week, uh, in three weeks, however long the contract lasts for. They're prepared to lose everything. They don't think they will. They think they're going to be outsmarting the market, but they're prepared to lose it all. And you are the very generous person that is saying to them, I have a contract that I'm happy to write on uh, GameStop right now. I'd love to write $33 calls that expire tomorrow or $33 or $34 calls that expire next Friday. Anybody want these? Here's what I'm prepared to sell my calls for. The bid ask is $230 to $250. I'm putting mine out at $249 because I'm a great guy. I'm a great gal. Would you like some? And surprise, surprise, you're filled. You just sold a contract for two forty nine dollars that you know isn't worth anywhere near that amount of money. That sucker is worth $0.50, cents, but you just sold it for two forty nine. dollars Why? Because the market is so froth with desperados. They're paying way more for contracts maybe than they should. We're in a bear market, you know. We're in an economy that's... Uh, these people need a hit. They need a return. They're thinking, I'll pay two forty nine dollars for this contract, but when the stock runs, I'll sell this contract for $4.49, $6.49, $8.49. I'll sell it for a profit. I'm smart. I'm right. But if I'm wrong and they go down to $2, I'll sell out and I'll buy a contract in something else. That's their thinking. Someone will buy that contract from them for $2, of course. It might be you, but it probably won't be you. It'll be somebody else. And that person will gamble going, it'll go to three. I'll buy the two. It'll go to three. I'll make my money. And it doesn't. It goes to 150. And then they get out. And another person buys that contract. Goes, that's all right. This is going to go to 250. Uh, the stock, this stock's going to come. I'm going to make money on this contract. I know it's only got a week left. It had three weeks. Then it had two weeks. Now it's got a week left. But I'm only paying a buck fifty for it. I, I'll make money on it. And it goes to a dollar. And you're coming in going, you know, I sold these for uh, $249 um, a week and a half ago. Maybe I might buy them back around $0.81. Cents. And you put in a stink bit to buy them back at 81 And that day, the next day, the day after that, boom, you bought it. You got your call back. And you do your mathematics. And you quickly figure out, I made $1.70, $170 bucks on these contracts. I wrote 10 of them. I just made $1,700 in a week and a half. Why am I working? Why, why did I ever work? Why didn't I do this 15 years ago? Where was Uncle Bruce 15 years ago when I could have used him? What was that schmuck doing? Here he is talking to me about writing options in 2022. I could have had this, I could have been doing this in 2005, Bruce. Thanks a lot, man. I'm old now. <laughs> Welcome to our little world. Welcome to the YouTube channel that I run. Um, we like writing options and s scoring all kinds of money from option writers, uh, option gamblers, I should say. I mean, desperate gamblers who will pay unbelievable money for a contract that you want to offer. It's ridiculous. It's it's insanity and it's legal. You are joining those uh, that six trillion, the six trillion dollars that uh, the North American pension funds have. There are. Thousands of people, uh, maybe tens of thousands of people that manage that money. And of those, there are a certain number of people inside those organizations that write option contracts on vast amounts of shares that these pension funds own for their pensioners to bring in income on a monthly basis, a regular basis, weekly basis to fund the cost of running the pension fund. And you are doing exactly what they're doing. It's just it's for yourself. You're running your own pension fund. It's your own private pension fund. It's your assets. And you're taking your sliver of the deal off the top as well. You're not writing a 1,000 contracts at a time. You're writing one, six, nine, two, five, ten, whatever. Welcome to the party, pal. You are in this world and i appreciate you all being here i have talked so long that the market is open larry titus has rung the bells and we're up and going let's find out what's going on uh is there anything happening today are any of you making money today i i suspect some of you are uh maybe all of you are uh we're down 68 points on the dow at this point in time amc is up 24 cents 
ape are, is down 20 cents so it's only a four cent gain on amc today gamestop is up 15 cents uh sofi up 15 to 660 me is up four matterport is up six cents we got ATIP up a penny, Rocket Lab up six, Smart Rent down nine, Spire is unchanged, Sextera down 31, Bed Bath Beyond down 23 cents. Tesla's up 236 to $299. A three for one split has happened, and the stock is just under $900 a share. We're not going anywhere on Tesla. We've had our run from the 700s to 900. We're here. Why should it go any higher? Just because it's split three for one? Not this time. Uh, there are problems at Tesla. There are problems in China for assembly of vehicles and delivery issues. There are all kinds of issues there. Uh, but, you know, the company's uh, popular as get up. The cars are great. Uh, but there are logistics uh, to be dealt with. Um, Pfizer down eight cents. Uh, Boeing down up 191. Apple up 156 to 169.09. HBQ is up 80 cents today, 3402. Cisco's down six cents. Twitter down 44, Home Depot down 26 cents, Carvana up 166, Robinhood up a dime, Vanic Vectors ETF up 252, IBM is up 20 cents, Microsoft down a dollar four, Goldman up 133, Google up 63 cents, Amazon up 70 cents. Not much in the way of movement here. Meta Platforms, the old Facebook up 185, BlackBerry up seven cents, Royal Caribbean is down. No, hang on a minute. Where's Royal Caribbean, Bruce? Royal Caribbean is up 125. Pardon me. Um, U.S. Steel up 53 cents. Target up 21 cents. Uh, J.P. Morgan up 14. Costco down 125. Walmart up 64. Nvidia down a buck 90. American Airlines up 24 cents. We've got uh, Moderna down 275. That's our opening right now. 54 point drop on the Dow at the moment, as we have started trading seven minutes ago, and that is what is happening here as we are watching these markets um we've got s p up nine and nasdaq up 54 with the dow down 53 oil up 77 cents at the moment gamestop 32.51 the low of 3201 the high of 3289 and we're up one penny on gamestop right on uh haha meeting again making me late even even larry is behind the eight ball like me unbelievable Welcome one, welcome all to the show. Thank you all of you who have been throwing me thumbs ups while I've been yapping away. I appreciate it very much. 151 thumbs ups are in the house. We need 49 more to hit the magical 200 barrier. If you could hit that thumbs up button for us, get us through 200 thumbs ups. That is so appreciated by yours truly. Thank you all for helping out. Getting us to 200 thumbs ups ASAP. Those of you who are here as lurkers, welcome all hope you're learning something new every day that you're hanging out with us those of you who are here as subscribers i can't thank you enough for being a subscriber of this channel if you haven't subscribed please hit the subscription button become a subscriber of this channel you'll get alerts every time i go on every time i do anything you'll, you'll be alerted that something's up something's up they're up to something what's going on um those of you who have taken the big step and have become a member of this channel so that you can comment here during market hours which we've just turned on those of you who are big uh, those of you who are chilling with uncle bruce members you're paying about 10 bucks a month to be here 33 cents a day i thank you very much for that uh, you're great uh, thank you for your loyalty to this channel helping keeping me going those of you who have taken the big move and have become one of these people up here one of these gold bagel members uh you know right there there's a little uh 25 bucks a month um 30 days a month um what was that 80 something cents a day um thank you uh of course you you're of course commenting here you're obviously joining me every every day before market the market opens we do the trader alert update for gold bagel members and then wednesday nights eight o'clock prime time wednesday night prime time with uncle bruce we did our show last night again for just Gold Bagel members, and man, did we cover stuff last night. Uh, that show ran long. I think I got off the air about an hour and a half after we started. Normally, it's about an hour. Went long. Uh, I went right to sleep after that. I was exhausted. Um, that's kind of like having a one-on-one -on -one with me, as close as you're going to get to have a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if you want your own one-on-one, -on -one, 
uh, it's 400 bucks an hour to join me one-on-one. -on -one. I'll give you more than $400 worth of ideas. That's not the problem. The, the thing is, I can only do so many a week. Uh, Sundays right now is when I'm available. I have three openings per week only for one-on-ones. I have to have a life. But Wednesday nights, several dozen of you. And it's only several dozen. That's the amazing part about it. It's a small, intimate group of people who ask me question after question about options, strategies, uh, opinions, thoughts, comparing notes. It's fabulous. And uh, if you'd like to become part of the Wednesday night crowd, uh, and or if you can't join us live, you get to watch the rerun. Uh, as a Gold Bagel member, you can watch the rerun all you want. Um, become a Gold Bagel member upgrade from the chilling with uncle bruce level to gold or join this channel as a as a new member the join button is probably down here somewhere and join at the gold bagel member immediately at that level i will give you more than 25 dollars a month of money making ideas okay you're gonna make a lot more money than 25 dollars the cost of being a member this is cheap i have been told many times that i should scrap all membership levels just dump them all and only offer one level of membership 100 bucks a month is what i've been told i should be doing and then that way i have a group of people i can talk to that are intimate and i can really zero in on these folks and give them thousands of dollars thousands of dollars of ideas every month to make money in the in the market but what i'd like to do and what i'm trying to do is grow this channel out to the larger pool of people out there. And so many folks out there are getting completely uh, misdirected by uh, pie in the sky, get rich quick schemes that just don't stop. I even see ads on my show. Like I'll watch, I'll click in my show from yesterday and I'll see the commercials prior to my show starting. And there are some ridiculous uh, get you know uh, make all kinds of money with with other people's money ideas it blows my mind uh there are i i feel for so many millions of people out there uh, of the billion people a day that watch youtube there are millions that are looking for ideas and suggestions on how to make money in the markets and they're being bombarded with some of the most ridiculous pie in the sky crap that i cannot believe and I, I shudder to think how many people are losing on top of losing as it is. Scary. Um, if you're here, I'm hoping it's working for you. I'm hoping that you're enjoying the content. I am hoping that you are looking to take classes on how to become an option writer and turn your portfolio around from being a loser to becoming a winner. I'm telling you right now, if you think that I can help you become a millionaire in two weeks, you are sadly mistaken. You cannot. Don't stay here if that's what you're after. I'm not that guy. Okay. But if you like to make money consistently in the market and you like to kind of have a lower uh, uh, pressure situation uh, when you're watching your portfolio, this is the channel for you. We'll guide you through the ups and downs of the market. We'll guide you through the craziness that's happening. We'll try to explain in plain English what is happening out there. But if you take these classes, I, I got 13 classes right now. There'll be more coming. But at the moment, there are 13 classes that are about an hour and a half to two hours and 20 minutes long each. And I'm zeroing in on how to be an option writer, whether you're writing options on stock you have, writing options on ETFs you own, writing options on options like poor man covered call trading strategies where you can leverage up your income right away for your account, spreads, all kinds of ideas, um, puts and calls. It's a conservative thing that I'm promoting. I'm not promoting a risky risk everything you have on one trade and don't worry if you lose it all no no that's not not here we're talking about writing options on assets you own already that you've been sitting on in some cases for decades that aren't doing a damn thing for you you've come to the right channel for revenue generation into your hands 
There's so many of you out there who are getting nailed with all kinds of inflationary hits, left, right, and center. Uh, you've quickly realized, oh my God, we got to find a way to bring in another 500 a month just to survive and hang on to what we've got. Uh, I don't know what to do. Um, should I get a second job? Do I ask my boss for a raise? Uh, what if he says no? Then he's upset that I asked and now I can't get a promotion anymore. I mean, talk about problems. Um, but you're sitting on assets. You had no idea you what you were sitting on could make you money, could make you extra cash legally and conservatively. Conserv conservatively. <laughs> anyway. You're noticing across the screen here, this little thing going across all the time. I don't want to annoy you with it. That's why it's down there. It's it's the PayPal address for my PayPal account. If you want to take some classes, uh, you can get four for the price of three by making a donation to that PayPal address, which, by the way, the link is down below here. You notice where it says see more. Uh, for more information, you click see more and you'll find that link right there. And below that, you'll find an email, an email link to me. And you'll find another link to my website, stockmarketswithbruce.ca. All right. And if you go to the stockmarketswithbruce.ca link, this is it right here, you're going to end up coming to this homepage that I have right here. This is my homepage. Okay. That's my, my, my stock markets with Bruce.ca homepage. All right. If you go there, you're going to notice uh, on the very top, the top, the, the, uh, the um, uh, says home about classes, events, all that stuff. You're going to hit the classes, um, toggle there, whatever that's called. And you're going to come to this section here, attention students, classes and section in session, scroll down and you'll start seeing the lessons available. Number one, number two, number three, number four and five and six and on and on it goes. Okay. So you want to know how to write stock options and you want to know how it works and the psychology behind it all. Here's where you go. Um, how to do um, uh, spreads, uh, how to do poor man covered call writing. It just goes on and on and on. You've got available to you about 24 hours of instruction whenever you want it. And right now you can make a donation to my PayPal account right here. two ninety nine ninety nine American funds, U.S. funds. Send that over to this PayPal location. Send me an email at brucefarmer at hotmail.com and say, Bruce, I would like to start with your classes. Um, I want numbers one, two, three, and four. I just want to start right at the beginning, which I recommend you do. Um, but uh, some of you will say, no, no, I'm too smart for that. I'm going to watch uh, classes number four, eight, nine, and 13. You will tell me whatever four you want. I don't care. I'm like Kramer. Welcome to Movie Phone. Tell me what movie you want to see. Press the number for what movie you want to see. Or why don't you just tell me the name of the movie you want to see? Well, tell me the name you want of the classes. Tell me the numbers. And I will send you the four classes you want. And you're paying for the price of three. You can watch them every as many times as you want, any time of the day or night. There's no test. <laughs> There's no exams. There's no surprise quizzes. It's just a class with live people that were in the class, which are the same people right here. These see these see see these guys over here talking. Most of the a lot of these folks were in the live class. And Jennifer, my Jennifer Aniston lookalike wife, who you never see, she was the moderator of said class. And we did the thing live. Then we edited the class with my my editor, and we made them available through the website. So now you can watch the clean cut edited version of the class 13 of them to learn how how to write stock options how options work how they depreciate how they are created how they die why they go up why they go down how they don't move at all what all the terms mean all those words what does all that mean what are the how do you actually physically write a contract how do you physically buy one back who buys them who, who sells them to you 
all the questions you have are in the classes. It's it's in plain English, and it's there. And all of these folks here, majority of these folks who are writing options today, they figured out how to do it more or less through yours truly. And you can write, you can read again and again and again a comments coming here that people are paying to to write this. People pay me to write these comments. It's not like I'm paying them. They're paying me as members to tell you what's going on and each other uh, how they're making money writing options. Welcome to the party, pal. We love Die Hard. We love Seinfeld. And we use references all the time to these outfits. Great to have you here. I noticed that The Real Deal is a new member of this channel. I just uh, can't tell you how excited I am. As a matter of fact, The Real Deal... The real deal is already a member of this channel, but the real deal just upgraded to become a gold bagel member of this channel. So the real deal is now dropping $25 a month to be here. And I suspect that the real deal is already generating more than $25 worth of ideas every month as it is. Uh, but now the real deal is part of the gold bagel member family. I thank you. Jennifer, thanks you. Welcome to the to the party here. And uh, I, of course, look forward to seeing you every morning for the Trade Alert Show, which runs anywhere from 7.45 Eastern to 8.10, depending on just how organized I am and how frazzled I am with what's going on. And then, of course, Wednesday night, Primetime Live. Um, definitely welcome to that. So thank you, all of you who are just members uh, at the chilling level or members at Gold Bagel member subscribers, lurkers, followers, fans. I'm glad you're here. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, this is fantastic. Uh, Zed Estate has a question. Hey, listen, man. Uh, I had uh, 12 GameStop contracts that were exercised at 3250 a few weeks ago, and I've been waiting for the right time to buy back my stock. Um, he got 3250 a share, plus he got to keep the premiums that he got when he wrote those contracts. And he's been sitting on this dough, and here's the stock at 32.45. We were just down to 32, uh, what we were down to, 31.88 a moment or two ago. We might be even going lower as the way this way is, the way the stock's going right now. Should I buy them back now? What do you think? My thinking on this is, is simply this. If you're going to buy the stock back because uh, you've been waiting for it to come back to here, great, great strategy. I can't argue with that strategy. There's nothing wrong with it. My suggestion is check the option chain right now and let's pretend you did buy the stock right now, okay? Let's just say you are buying it. What contract are you writing against it? Because I want you to write a contract immediately against this stock. This takes away the uncertainty of, well, if, it, you know, if I buy the stock and then I don't write an option right away and it goes down, I will get a lower premium and I don't want to do that. So my thinking is figure out what contract you're going to write if you were to buy the stock this second. And then take a look at the numbers and see if that works for you. Do you want to write a contract that dies tomorrow? Do you want to write a contract that dies next Friday? The Friday after that? The Friday after that? What exercise price do you want to write at? What's comfortable for you? Conservatively, you can write a call option like a $35 call option on GameStop, even though it's only at $32.30. You can write a $35 call good for three, four, five weeks out if you want and bring in some premium money. The longer it lasts, the more money you're going to get. The problem is the longer you got to wait for the contract to depreciate out to nothing or much lower level, we hope. If you write a call for tomorrow, and you write a 35, you get nothing for that because it has no value. Why would anyone pay you any money for a contract that dies tomorrow? That's 250 out of the money. I wouldn't give you any money for it. So maybe you'll write a $33 contract for tomorrow or for next Friday, you'll write a 33 or a 33.50 or a 34 or the Friday after that, you'll write a 34, 34.50 or a 35 or a 32 contract because you think the stock might go even lower, even though you just bought it. You just bought it for 32 Right now, it's trading 30 to 25. You're going to write a $32 contract because you think it's going to go down to 30 anyway. Fair enough. You can write a $30 contract that expires a week or two or three from now or five weeks or eight weeks from now. Whatever's comfortable for you. Uh, but conservatively, 
I'd look at buying here, but I would look at immediately writing options against the contract, the stock immediately. And if you can bring in $3 a contract, something like that, depending on how long out you go or more or a little less, can you bring in up to 10% of what you just sold the stock for? Can you bring in 322 for a contract that you just bought the stock at 3220, 32.26 for? That gives you an immediate 10% downside protection against the cost of the stock. Now you're protected down to $29. It's conservative. On the other hand, if you're writing, like I said, a 33 or a 34, and you're getting that kind of money for a three, four week contract, whatever it is, you're also saying to the market, you can go up a dollar and I still will make money on this contract because at 33.30, this contract I just wrote for 34 is still out of the money. This contract will be worthless if the stock does not go over $34 or whatever that exercise price is. So yeah, um, that's how I would do it, said the state. Okay. I hope that I'm pretty sure you picked all this up and you know it, but there you go. Those are my thoughts. For those of you who are newbies, and you don't understand what I was just talking about, the classes are waiting for you. And uh, you can join us and hang around here. The more you hang around here, you're going to get it. You're going to figure out what they're talking about. You're going to understand, oh, that, oh, that's what he meant by that. Oh, oh yeah, when Zeta State said that, that's what he was talking. I, I get it now. Now I know what Zed is. I see the wheels turning in Zeta State's head. And there's Uncle Bruce reacting to him. And now we get, ah, this interaction is going on. I want to be part of this. Welcome to the party, pal. Here we are. Oh, we're having so much fun. Um, what else is going on? Um, Uncle Bruce, is there a link for the Wednesday night members only show? Uh, if you're a Gold Bagel member, I would think you would be able to go to the community tab in your YouTube channel, my, my homepage. And there should be the alert that should have been sent to you. And that would have the link right there. Check it out. Check it out. Uh, hopefully that you find it there. Nick, J J J yes, it should be under the community tab. But well, there, see, I can't even answer questions sometimes because my members tell other members, oh, this is what you should do. And this is part of the family we have here. That You're part of that family if you join this channel. If you're a member... This is the kind of help you're going to get. Help with your platform questions. Uh, if you're dealing with TD Ameritrade and you're getting pr you got problems with TD Ameritrade, post a question here. You'll probably find someone else with a TD Ameritrade who can give you an answer to your problem quick, live. You can always call Ameritrade. You can always be on hold for half an hour. I mean, you know, all that stuff. It's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Splair, it's exactly what I wanted to mention, the community tab session after clicking on the profile from Uncle Bruce. Thanks, Splair. Thank you, everybody, for being here. You guys are great. As always, um, let's see. What is it? Anything Chinese we ought to know, Bruce? Uh, trouble, trouble, trouble. Uh, what else is going on here? Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. What else is happening here? Um um, uh, Nick is saying here that the Gold Bagel member show is practically a one-on-one -on -one show. You can really ask uh, an extremely, you know, detailed option question to come up with the strategy of Uncle Bruce and the Nomads on there. It's the only show that, uh, that you can't miss TV. Thank you, Nick. Th that kind words, man. I appreciate it. Um, uh, Splair, for me, the primetime show is very helpful as a beginner. I can ask enough uh, to plan the following weeks. And actually, my plan is a set of two options to write one. Anyway, there you go. Um, what else? Uh, here you are, Options Nomads. The Wednesday night show alone is worth the price of admission. Uh, Bleacher Creature. I highly recommend the Wednesday night shine, primetime show. Small group, all good conversations. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, very much. We did a uh, open house last week. Last week's Wednesday show was open to all. And... Uh, I think we had over 1,500 views of that show. That was pretty impressive. Anyway, there you go. Um, let's see. What else is going on here? I just want to make sure if I missed anything crazy, uh, I'll do the best I can. Uh, yeah, here, Lame Duck is saying, I went to a McDonald's in Kentucky a couple of months ago, and the lobby was closed. drive through was open, but didn't have enough employees to keep the lobby open, not like they're waiting on tables. Isn't that interesting? 
that is what's going off. That's what's going on here with this economy. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Yucks, yikes, yikes, all kinds of stuff. It's ugly. It's scary. Um, uh, Andrew Felder, Uncle Bruce, you are speaking the truth. I have an MBA, and you're explaining my mentality until I met you. Thanks for changing my mentality. <laughs> uh, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, everybody. Uh, <laughs> Oh man. Anyway, thank you everybody for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, trying to keep up with uh, all your comments as they're going through. A lot of folks talking to each other, which is what this channel is great for. Thank you guys. Uh, appreciate you all being here today. Uh, what are we at right now? We've got the Dow, I think, higher. Yeah, we're up. Um, 123 points on the Dow right now. We got S&P up 33, NASDAQ up 126. Um, and uh, Kansas City uh, Fed's uh, George kicks off Jackson Hole saying inflation remains broad-based and there is more work to be done. Guess what? Higher interest rates. The thought was three and a quarter to three and a half percent is where the Fed funds would go. That would be enough. Talk now, four to four and a half percent, more and more. And some are saying five to six percent. The Fed's fund rate will have to go between five and six percent to truly affect interest rates, uh, inflation rates. A five to six percent Fed funds rate hasn't been seen in the United States since the 90s. Many of you who are watching me uh, 30 years ago, you were less than 15 years old. You didn't give a crap about interest rates. You had no idea what they even were. You have never been in a world of 5 to 6% Fed funds rates as an adult. Never. You're going to see mortgages. If that happens, if that happens, you're going to see mortgages at 7 to 8% for top quality credit. You're going to see second mortgages at 8 to 10%. You're going to see real estate take a hit because there is no dang way that people can afford to pay $700,000 on a house with $200,000 down and carrying a $500,000 mortgage at 7 or 8%. That is going to put mortgage payments out of the universe for most people. There's just no way that can happen. And so prices have to come down. It's going to create a real estate drop in values. No way around it. It's going to drop off new housing construction. It's going to drop back renovation work. It's going to be a big hit to the economy because the refinancing business is also going to take a hit. It's not looking good. And it's possible to be happening within six to eight months from now that we could be five to seven percent or five percent on the Fed funds rate. Just, just telling you what I'm hearing. This is what's being talked about everywhere all over the place. Uh, Europe, even worse. Uh, we are going from negative interest rates in some cases to substantial interest rates. And this is going to sh just upend the entire economic cycle. And it doesn't help that energy reliability is in question. Forget about the price of energy. Just getting it is a problem. That is another uncertainty. The economy does not need anywhere, whether that's USA, Canada, Europe, South Africa, Asia, I don't care. It's not not good for economics, okay? Anyway, there you are. Uh, what else is going on here? Um, mm, 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 uh, those cases, those those things you said last night helped me so much, this spicy Arnold. Splair, when you drive again, McDonald's, ask them if they need a manager from Germany. <laughs> Um, let's see what else is going on. John Anderson, Uncle Bruce, I'm looking to sell an option for September the 9th uh, for uh, for Goldman Sachs. Um, would it be better to do an out of the money or in the money? Thanks, your ultra conservative nephew. Um, so you want to write a Goldman Sachs call option for September 9. Let's take a look here. Where are we at here on G? There it is, 344.92 up 298. I'm sure glad to see this stock here versus the 200s. I mean, this is this is a little more reality-driven 
than where we were um you know three months ago heck june 17th we were 279 god that was ridiculous anyway 344 right now 345 um september 9th uh so you're talking about um two weeks out right it uh, does it, it tomorrow's the 26th then we got september 2 then we got september 9th so it's two weeks out um i mean i look at it this way if you if you're going to write a uh, a 350 contract say five about five dollars out of the money for that time frame might be a way to go but i'm not sure if the premiums will excite you that much but you're adding a higher exercise price to your contract you're obviously saying to the market you can have my stock give me five bucks more plus this premium i'll take the deal on the other hand you turn around and say no no i'm going to write a 245 a 345 i'm writing at the money practically for two weeks give me a bigger premium because i'll take the 345 plus the premium and i'll take that price i'm a, i'm good to go um you can't go wrong either way to be honest in my personal opinion you can't go wrong either way you do it it's just a matter of um are you comfortable to uh rolling over a contract if need be that that is the the end game here are you comfortable having to do a rollover if necessary um you shouldn't be uncomfortable uh doing a rollover in my humble opinion you should be quite, you know, eager to do it and say, okay, yeah, if you make me a rollover, uh, I'll do a rollover to September 16 or September, September 23rd. That's all right. I'll go ahead and do that. I'm just looking right now at my option chain here. A 350 for the second, uh, sorry, for the ninth, pardon me, September 9th, 350 will bring in between 310 and 355. That's the bid ask. A 345 at the money five and a quarter 565 so if you take 550 for the contract let's just assume you did you're telling the market you can have me at 350 50. that's what you're doing you're you're saying that i'm available at 350 and a half uh i don't have a problem with that deal um not at all it's an out it's just barely out of the money it's all premium it'll all depreciate out if the stock goes to uh, uh, three, um, uh, you know, 47, it's $2 in the money, uh, with a week to go, it'll be trading at like three fifty-four. You're still ahead on it, even though the stock has gone up, which means you're richer. Uh, you'll still buy them back for less than you sold them for and your stock has gone up and you'll now buy those back and write three, uh, uh, three forty-eights or three fifties. If the stock goes to three fifty and your contract is worth five bucks book value, in the last couple of days of its life, it'll be five fifty to six dollars. What do you care? You'll buy the contract back for practically what you sold it for. Your stock is up five bucks, thank you, and you'll turn around now and write a three fifty call for two weeks and bring in another five twenty five to five fifty and say, okay, here, uh, go up another five dollars on me if you want, or uh, come back to two forty six, and I'll score this uh, five twenty five premium. I'll take almost all of it. So. You've got that. You got those two to play with. That that would be my initial reaction to this. I hope that helped. Uh, Tiff, Uncle Bruce Merkel helped me reduce my commissions. I had to pay for an option from three fifty to uh, between sixty two and a buck fifty five a contract. Being a member of this community really pays out. And there you go. Uh, that's the other thing about being a member of this channel. You're talking to these other traders here for the best brokerage deal the best service the best platform you think about this uh it doesn't sound like a lot of money you know 350 a contract buck 50 a contract it's only two dollars less a contract but you want to become a full-time option writer uh you're going to need to write 30 to 50 contracts a month on average depending on the stock heck man if you can write 50 contracts a month and save two dollars a contract that's 100 a month that's 1200 a year you're not paying out in fees yeah can you use twelve hundred dollars a year for something else i would say so yeah 100 a month no kidding 62 cents man if you can pay 62 cents instead of 350 that's like 280 something a contract yeah 
fifty a month, uh, one hundred forty a month savings, uh, almost two thousand a year. Yeah, I would. Does that pay to be a member of this channel? By the way, just just coming back to the first example, instead of paying three fifty, you're paying a buck fifty because of this channel. You're saving two dollars a contract. Can you write thirteen contracts in a month? That pays for this right there. The savings alone pays for the gold bagel membership. You write 50 contracts a month, that's 100 a month. That pays for four months of being a member of this channel every month. I mean, yeah, nice going. If ATI pay breaks a dollar this week, I'm going to party so hard, I'm going to need an ATIP. <laughs> Beach boy. Uncle Bruce, what do you think about the GameStop employee reward plan reported on the journal today or yesterday? I probably missed your take on it. I don't even think I, I don't think I read it. I don't know anything about it. Uh, the stock's down 31 cents. Uh, what do you think the market thinks about it? It's a nothing burger as far as the market is concerned. Uh, so I, I, I'm going to have to find that article and read it. But the, the market is telling you its answer already. It doesn't care. It's like Tommy Lee Jones in the fugitive. I don't care. It's interesting, isn't it? Interesting. Um, Goldman Sachs has been steady lately. I just do out-of-the-money calls. Rock and roll. Coyote Beach Boy, one thing I noticed was that the employee share program is set at yearly intervals. Most uh, places that are quarterly, from my experience, seems like a carrot stick method to keep people around. And it's not going to attract a lot of interest from part timers, I don't think. Anyway, what can I say? Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, let's see. Um, uh, what else is going on? Nick, hey, Uncle Bruce and gang. If the conditions around economy are set up to have the markets test their most recent lows, does it make sense to buy spider puts? I uh, do not condone going long on options. Uh, almost never. I, 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 I would not do it. Um, uh, the answer is no. <laughs> I just, no. Uh, she has a spider dropped in the last week. Not sure how it's going to go down in the next little while. Uh, I'd avoid that. Really avoid that. Um Sometimes the markets just don't care. Thanks, Uncle B. You got it. Um, let's see. Um, uh, yeah, I've seen pe people get burned on SPY calls and puts because, well, the market is, you know, what the market is. Who cares? Uncle Bruce, can you maybe post a poll to see what platforms the members are using? I'm on E-Trade, but wondering if there's a better one. Uh, why, don't, why don't you guys tell me... Um, of all the platforms that you've used, some of you have had multiple platforms, what's the best one and why? Let us know. Uh, fire away a little comment to us. What's the one you'd rather? Uh, Goyote, who cares? I use Fidelity. I'm a fan of it, but I know others are not. It's not perfect. I also use uh, Robinhood for watch lists, but I'm not investing with them. Nick, Goyote, I just looked at the premiums. You could actually lose some money if you're wrong. Way too scary. Uh, Tiff, Uncle Bruce, I'll join the Gold ba ba Bagel member real soon. Only need a little bit more with my covered calls. Who cares? Says thank you, Goyote. Uh Yeah, if anybody has some thoughts on what platforms you'd recommend, by all means, let us know, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, what else is up here? I But I do. I use Fidelity for most of what I do, says DQ. There you go. Another comment on a platform right now. GameStop, $31.99. We're back under 32 again. The low of the day, $31.88 on GameStop today. Uh, the volume on GameStop so far this morning uh, looks like, um, where am I? Here we are. It looks like about a million shares, uh, if, I'm a if that's accurate. Um, I'm guessing that's accurate. Uh, doesn't look all that great. Um, Mortgage rates rise amid signs of war waning demand for homes. Headline just coming out. Uh, more bad news on the housing side. The Dow is still up, but not as much as before. It's up 97 points. AMC is down three, and the Ape shares are down 38. So AMC is off 41 cents on a combined, uh, quote, 16.30 or something like that, I think is where we're at. Uh, GameStop, 32.08, little bounce, uh, down 42 cents. SoFi, 6.45, unchanged. ME, up 3.5 cents to 370. Matterport, up 7 to 471. ATIP, up 2 cents to 98 cents. Rocket Lab, up a dime 
545. Smart rent down a half a penny. It's coming back to to break even. It was as low as uh, 342 this morning, and smart rent now is um, uh, got to 362. It's now 358 and a half down about a penny. So it's almost breaking even. It had just been green a moment ago, so it's come back. Spire is up five and a half cents to one. It's up six cents to 139. Spire at 139, up six cents here on a volume of 121,000. It didn't take much to move that up today. Sextera down a quarter to 741. Bed Bath Beyond down 63 cents to 973. The story coming out of there now is that they've got a lender telling, looking to lend them about 400 grand. And um, apparently bonds of Bed Bath & Beyond, the, the junk bonds that are out there that they issued over the last number of years, if you buy some of those, you will get 25% interest on them, which tells me the bond market is predicting they won't pay. And uh, uh, they're negotiating a new deal for $400 million, which will likely be a loan that will be a preferred loan. In other words, it's a loan that they have to pay off first before they can pay off bonds, which puts the bonds into default, possibly. This is how bad it is at Bed Bath & Beyond now that Cohen walked away. Uh, analysts are saying out loud what I was yelling at about two weeks ago. Why didn't they sell any stock when the stock was 25 bucks a share? I am certain, without any doubt in my mind, that under SEC regulations, these guys could have issued 4 million shares at 25 bucks a share like that through the market. They would have raised 100 million in cash with just 4 million shares. They were trading 250 million a day. Don't tell me they couldn't have blown off 10 or 20 million shares over a four or five day window. Could have done it. They could have raised 250 million bucks easy last two weeks ago. Didn't do it, didn't do it. And now they're doing this. This is bad news. Uh, Tesla, 296.50 down 58 cents. Pfizer up six cents. Boeing up 474. Apple up 217. HPQ up 94 to 34.16. Uh, Cisco up 23 cents. Twitter down 48. Home Depot down 22. Carvana up 253. Robinhood up 17 cents. Vanek up 448. IBM up 70, Microsoft up 111, Goldman up 255, Google up 187, Amazon up 233. Some some ideas for you. What's going on? Some indications. Um, still down 42 cents on AMC between the commons being up a penny and the apes being down 43. Uh, now I'm seeing commons down two, apes down 42. It's a 44 cent loss today on the combined value of a M C um, sixteen dollars and thirty something cents. We were at twenty seven dollars two weeks ago uh, on the common stock. Not not good. GameStop thirty one seventy seven now thirty one seventy two. GameStop at new lows uh, thirty one seventy two right now down seventy eight cents. New low of the day uh, right now on. GameStop. So down we go. Um, not stopping. Still going lower. Uh, AMC is lower. GameStop is lower. Whether it's right or wrong, it is. It's just lower. SoFi down a penny at 644. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, Nick, I like, uh, I, I have Fidelity and I like it, although I'm starting to build a SoFi account when options come out. I'll watch that. Um, others, uh, here we go. We have others talking about who they like. Um, uh, let's see. Um, DQ, I use Fidelity for most of what I do. Flint Creek, SoFi, no option trading. Robinhood, no TD works. Hawkeye, I use Schwab. 
Coyote, I will definitely look at a SoFi account once options are a thing, says Coyote. Cindy B says Ameritrade and Robinhood is who I use. Splare, first trade, very safe. You can find everything. Options are already a hot topic in their page. Very beginner friendly. And when you cash out, depending on the amount, they will call you to get to, to make sure everything's good. Who cares, says I like the idea of supporting SoFi. Um, Nick, I have fidelity. Susan shops about. Thoughts on Party City? Uh, P-R-T-Y. I'm thinking to press stock at two bucks. Could be a squeeze soon. Thoughts on what terms to write uh, a void like the plague. Uh, wouldn't touch that. Um, no way. Uh, if they're way down there, uh, it, it's not good. No, I would not be there. Uh, Bleacher Creature, TD Ameritrade, commission free stock trades. Option trades are 66 cents a contract, I believe. Karen, I like Fidelity because it's fairly easy to use. I have Webull too, but I don't like it as much. Alicia, uh, TD Ameritrade works well for us. Uh, Splare, I think on first trade, uh, you don't, you can't overpay more than four dollars for an option when writing it. Um, but I'm not sure for a 100% of the uh, at least have the butterfly strategy and others. Uh, uh, Splares wishing everybody a good day. Thanks, buddy. Susan shops about for those of us um, really new. Do you recommend us looking at cheap stocks like Party City at two bucks to write? No. Uh, writers can't lose a lot of money, right? No, I would not. Uh, no. Now, if you own it because you've had it a long time and all that, I yeah, you can write options on it, but I can't give you any suggestions. I have no idea. Uh, I just, I mean, I'd be happier if you got out of this and got into something else that you can write options on that, that has upside potential, you know, written all over it, like SoFi, you know, and write on a SoFi if you want, but not on uh, on that. Amy, uh, Robinhood and Weeble is who I use. Michael, Fidelity too, maybe be, use it because of my 401k is with them. I don't hate them, though. ATP is nice. Uh, there you go. Uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, we're up 82 on the Dow right now. AMC is up 2. Ape is down 43. GameStop down 58 to 31.92. Low the day now on GameStop has been 31.72. SoFi, 6.46, up 2 cents. ME up a nickel. Matterport up 6 cents. ATP up seven tenths of a cent rocket lab is up 14 smart rent is down one and a half spire up six six era down 26 cents at the moment uh, that's the deal on some of the SPACs. coyote atp gang rise up um splare start with matterport uh, or rocket lab if you want to get greedy on that one to two dollar distance to SoFi. Bama Babe, I use Fidelity and Vanguard. Uh, Nick, I also use TradingView to watch the market. It's helpful to keep logged out of Fidelity during the market. Easier to keep my arms crossed. Splare, I think that these two are the beginner friendliest. Don't spend too much for learning something. Uh, Goyote, Susan shops about, you can lose money writing on bad companies, uh, though I don't know anything about Party City. Moon Man Moo, I use Robinhood. Coyote, um, I would go SoFi or Matterport. Coyote, myself in that situation. JJ, I stick with the Think or Swim TD Ameritrade and Schwab trading platforms. I wouldn't touch Robinhood with a 10-foot pole. Credit Savage, uh, good morning, my fellow simpletons and degenerates, as well as Uncle Bruce. <laughs> Uncle Bruce, SoFi seems to want to retest the lows. I'm waiting for a pop on Friday when Jay Powell, William, got your donation, send me the list. Um, I'm waiting for Friday when Jay Powell opens his mouth and then tanks the market. Should I write covered calls? Coyote, the credit average. Uh, yep, hoping for a good spike to write on everything before then. Well, we'll find out how hawkish he is. Uh, just what is he going to do and how is he going to do it? Uh, because rates, frankly, are going to go higher. There is... Uh, I don't know how the market doesn't think that. I don't know how the market thinks it's going to be Shangri-La happy times and Kumbaya singing around a campfire. They're going to have higher rates. We're going to go up three quarters of a point in September. We might go up another three quarters in October. We're going past three and a half to four, maybe four and a half very quickly. 
uh, mortgages are going to reach 6% by the end of the year. By next year, we could be looking at 7 8% mortgages. I, I, I don't know how we don't do that. Uh, Inflation now eight something percent. We could be going to 10, 11 percent by the fall and into the winter. Britain is talking 13 to 19 percent in January. Inflation. Europe will likely be 12 to 14 percent. With natural gas priced at what oil is priced at, 550 a barrel. That's what natural gas is priced at right now in Europe today. It's August the 25th, it's going to get worse. Inflation is going to be bad, really bad in Europe. And it's going to infect us in a kind of a, you know, they got a flu, we get a cold. It's going to hit and rates are going higher and the markets are going lower. And that's it. That's that's it right there. Just boom. I I don't like saying it, you know, I don't like to have to tell you this, but I just, yeah. Okay. Nick, uh, Susan, uh, shops around Matterport and Rocket Lab are great cheap options. They both have $500 million in the bank as of a week ago. That makes Matterport 40% cash value and Rocket Lab 20% cash value, way underpriced. Write options on those. Uh, don't write options on party, whatever. Get out, get out of there and go over here. Um, Credit Savage, Coyote, yep, Jay Powell is the red market whisperer for a reason. I'm so lucky to have refinance when I did last year. In a year when I tell folks my interest is 2%, they call BS, laughing out loud. Yeah, took the interest rate last year at 2%. Way to go. Michael, uh, just remember, Matterport only has monthly options as of now. There you go. That's the story of what is going on. Thank you, all of you out there who have been taking advantage of the four classes for the price of three classes deal. Thank you all very much for that. Um, and uh, uh, sending me a payment for $299.99 US uh, for four lessons. Send me an email after you do the donation for $299.99 US and uh, tell me the four classes you'd like and we'll, uh, we'll get them to you after the show is done. And then you can start studying and become an option writer like these folks over here, option writers all over the place here. Make money on this market. We're not going all that much higher. Yeah, the Dow's up 125. Whoop uh, yeah, not going anywhere. Uh, okay, um, what else? Uh, uh, Susan shops about, I do have 300 shares of SoFi, but you said last week you wouldn't write cover calls on them at this point. Trying to figure out what timing on cover call writing. I agree. Yeah, so far right now, I would be not too eager to write at the moment. I think the stock is poised for another breakout. We believe here on this channel and the street thinks that SoftBank, the huge hedge fund out of Japan, multi, hundreds of billions of dollars in value, they are down gazillions of dollars. Gazillions. They, we think, blew out all of the last of their SoFi shares this week. We think they're out. And we believe that with them out, that has removed a block of stock out of the way for SoFi. And they got out, we think, at 610. We're now at 650. And I think from here, $8 is next. And there, we will talk about the idea of writing options on SoFi. Wait for 8 bucks. That's what I'm saying. Cindy, SoFi has weekly options. I like that over monthly options. Splitter, that's why I stepped my toe into Tilray. It has weekly, not recommendable though. Gaudi, Susan shops about, well, he said that because of the student loan thing and the fact that SoFi feels a bit oversold down here. You can write on SoFi whenever you feel. I write on SoFi all the time. And like I said, it's up to you what you want to do. But if you're going to take my two bits worth, my thinking is SoFi has a shot now to 8, 850 which could set up $10 option rights as your next, as your first move on options. That's just me though. Everybody has their own opinion. If you're a newbie, I would be cautious. And that's why I recommend SoFi hold off for now. Uh, Credit Savage seems like the Care Bear unit is still running the market. Bears unite. Uh, Gaiotti, but I am currently waiting. I think SoFi is going back to seven sooner or later. Jeff, 
Tastyworks charges a dollar per trade and only on the sell side. Interesting. Coyote, so I wouldn't write too much on SoFi here because I think it might run a bit sooner-ish as well. You want to make sure you're getting your money's worth with premiums, Coyote. But yeah, I agree with you, Uncle B. SoFi feels too oversold too quickly at the moment. Uh, Credit Savage, Uncle Bruce, this is true about SoFi. I see the first wave bounce to maybe 10 bucks by November earnings unless it retraces to the fives, in which case it negates that way. Jeff, um, Uncle Bruce, the info in lesson number 11, poor man covered call is well worth the 600 paid for all eight lessons I purchased. This is great stuff. There you go. That's usually what happens around here. Uh, people kind of figure out these classes are cheap. Uh, for what I'm learning in these classes, oh my God, am I learning stuff. Thank you, Jeff, uh, for that for that comment. Um, between the classes and hanging out here and then doing one on ones, uh, you're going to make money writing options. You're just going to make money. Um, Gaiotti, uh, GameStop, uh, taking it on the chin this morning, one thirty one eighty five right now on GameStop. As we are backing up again, we touched today one uh, thirty one seventy. Two, I believe. Yep, we're 3181 right now. We're only nine, 11 cents away from the low of the day or nine cents away from the low of the day. Uh, Susan shops around. For us first timers, would you do shorter expiry or go out to January 23, 24? Susan, you want to write options that are very short, very, very, very short. Uh, one, two, three weeks out. That's it. Just one, two, or three weeks out. No more. Um, if you can write an out of the money option, it's the best way to go. Uh, so if the, the stock is trading at uh, five dollars, you're writing six dollar contracts. If the stock is writing trading at four, you're writing five. So if the stock's trading at twenty one, you're writing twenty twos. If the stock's trading at thirty one, you're writing thirty twos, thirty threes for one or two or three weeks out. That's it. That's all you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, already, Susan, I would not go out that far at all, especially on SoFi. Uh, Odin's Pumpkin. Uh, my dad uses Robinhood. But only let them do limit orders on options in increments of five cents, which, as Bruce says, is a round number. We don't do round numbers. We need to do stink bids, odd numbers. So when you sell a contract, you write a contract. The key here is the money you get for it is how much you're going to make. If you're looking at a contract that is a 60 to 80 cent bid ask, you do not write it at 60 cents. No. <laughs> You offer it at 79, one penny below the 80, an odd, stupid number, one penny below that nice round number of 80. And when you buy it back and the market is 20 to 40, you don't pay 40 to buy it back. You put in a buy order at 21, one penny ahead of all the nice round number people. Stink bids, stink offers, stink bids at the high end and at the low end of the price point, depending on your trade. That's how you write contracts um, and buy them back. Between now and October, if SoFi touches eight sell covered calls, 10s and 1250s would be cool. I'm licking my chops to write 50 contracts. Odin's I have Fidelity and tra TD Trade, Ameritrade, which give me think or swim simulated trading in real time. Coyote, the credit savage, house, husband, I can't wait. It's going to be exciting. I got a whole lot of ammo for writing, and I want those nice premiums when it's back over eight. Credit savage, Coyote, yes, sir. Susan, uh, Bruce, thanks. Sounds, sounds like if SoFi is going to eight, I should be buying more shares right now. Coyote, so many people set buy limits at like $14.99, $19.99. And I always hit them with, I buy at $15.01, $20.01, $10.01. one i am a smooth criminal. criminal. Exactly. You've got to put in stink bids when you buy. You put in stink offers when you sell at the high end of the range or the low end of the range, depending on which side you're on. Exactly. Coyote, at these SoFi prices, I think this is the spot for buying and accumulating. So that's when it pops, you have more contracts to write. Exactly. Coyote, cut in the line, baby. Cut in on the sell side. Cut in line on the buy side. Absolutely. That's what you got to do. The Dow's up 130. AMC is unchanged on the common stock, but the Ape shares are down 59 cents. So we're having a bad day over there. Uh, GameStop is down 60 cents to 31.90. 
Below the day, 3172. SoFi 649 up four cents. ME up three cents. Matterport up five. We have got ATIP up one point three cents to ninety-seven. Rocket Lab up eleven to five forty-six. Smart rent up a half a penny to three sixty point five. Spire up eight point three cents. Eight three cents. That's one forty-one point three on Spire. We're going higher on Spire. Sextera down nineteen. Back Bed Bath Beyond nine sixty-two down seventy-four. Tesla down 67 cents. Pfizer up 17. Boeing up five and a quarter. Apple up 188. HPQ up 85. Cisco up 26. Twitter down 31 cents. Home Depot up 52 cents. Carvana up 261. Robinhood up 27 cents. Vanek Vectors up 595. IBM up 73. Microsoft up 155. Goldman up 337 to 345.31. Google up 225. Amazon up $3. Meta up 471. Blackberry up 11, Royal Caribbean up 237, uh, so U.S. Steel up 91 to 24.96, Target up 276, J.P. Morgan up 201, Costco down a dollar, Walmart up 43 cents, Nvidia up 552. This stock has had one heck of a crazy run. My gosh, uh, I gotta wonder where's the low, when is the low, how is it going to be? But they they lost a billion in projected sales. They're their numbers are way off. I don't understand these guys. I don't know what they're doing. Anyway, there you have it. Uh, we're up 141 on the Dow on a bit of a rally at this point. They're trying. I don't know if it's got any strength to it. Is it a computer program buying that we got going on? I don't believe in it. I don't think we're going very far. Um, Credit Savage, Susan, don't think of SoFi going to eight. Have a long-term plan. SoFi is going to 150. Buy in five to 10 years. Uh, thinking in five to 10 years here. That's the long-term view. You should have buy more. Michael, ME, and SoFi are good friends. Uh, Credit Savage, Coyote, yep, I'm having a short-term goal. Have 10,000 SoFi shares averaging under 10 bucks. That's what I'm looking to have. And let that baby go to 150 a share. Thank you very much. Uh, the Dow is up 145. AMC is up a penny. Ape down 61. GameStop, 31.88 down 62 cents. And yet the markets are higher. Isn't that telling you something? Interesting, huh? Interesting how the GameStop and AMC are off. Yeah, we're going to see what happens here. I don't know. <clears throat> uh, mm. I don't know. See what's going on. See what's going on. Um Do, 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 do. Goyote, that's going to print money. <laughs> You're going to get that many shares under 10 bucks. That's going to print money. And ice going. Uh, way to go, everybody. Welcome to the party, all. We're uh, 3181 on uh, GameStop. Um, near the low of 3172. We're only like a dime away from the low of the day on GameStop at the moment. 3180 right here. Just hit another lower trade point. On GameStop, those contracts of yours are backing off across the board, and I fully expect a lot of you have been rolling back your contracts. I sure hope so. Uh, Thirty-one seventy-five now on GameStop. We're only three cents away from the low of the day again. Um, I sure hope you're getting out of those Januarys and and anything longer to be back into Septembers and Octobers at the worst. Uh, that's what I'm hoping is going on here. Um, let's see here, uh, Goyote, watching my remaining cover calls wither and die at the moment. Sweet. 31.77 on GameStop, five cents away from the low of the day. All right, NASDAQ's up 165, uh, S&P up 41, Dow's up 147. The Dow's up a half a point, like 0.45, S&P's up 1%. And the NASDAQ is up 1.3% after a brutal week, not a great week. Credit Savage, can you guys imagine having 10,000 shares and they're over 100 a share? You seriously could retire and travel the world, but just sell covered calls for a living and pay for travel expenses? Beautiful stuff. Yeah, no kidding. And you, bring in, you can bring in, uh, you know, uh, 10, 15 grand a month in, in revenue just holding and writing out-of-the-money calls. Nice. 
Coyote, the current of the household, I would be living off cover calls well before it hits 100. I would imagine all of you would. And nicely, nicely. Uh, well done, everybody. Um, let's see what happens. Uh, let's get there. Let's get there. Um, Susan, um, let's see. I love you all. I've never felt more nervous, but you all help so much confirming the little I know about all this. Thank you, Bruce, and everybody. Right on, Susan. Just take your time. It's no rush. Uh, if you try one contract, see how it goes. Uh, go through the highs, the lows, <laughs> everything else, all the emotional of it, and uh, take it from there. Um, you'll you'll get used to it. Uh, you'll be fine. Our cost of living is disgustingly low. We don't spend money on anything, says Coyote. Uh, well, anything but stocks, laughing out loud. There you go. Way to go, guys. Way to go. Uh, GameStop trying a little rally here at 31.93, trying a little bounce back. Don't know if it'll go anywhere there. The Dow's uh, 149 at the moment, 42 on the S&P, 169 on NASDAQ. Uh, let's see. Uh, Alibaba among China stocks gaining after report details possible resolution to the U.S.-China audit issue. I'll believe it when I see it, because uh, I don't believe it. Uh, I really don't think so. Something tells me U.S. auditors are going to want certain information, and the Chinese government is going to say, nah, can't have it. The national security issues, you can't see that. And what are the national security issues we're talking about? Oh, the bribes. The bribes. Can't see that. No, no, no. We can't show you that. That's national security. We can't have that. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, let's see what's going on. Mm. Gioti, Susan Shops. Um, do as much research into it as you can. It'll be scary, but it goes away with writing experience, good and bad. Every writer says the same thing here. A bleacher creature, the credit savage. Um, 10,000 shares is the goal. Writing cash secured puts on it right now, trying to grab 8,000 shares around six bucks. Right on. Right on. Uh, Credit Savage, that would be awesome. As I come back to the States uh, and at Customs, they ask me what uh, what I do for a living, and the agent can't grasp the concept of selling covered calls, laughing out loud. Not many can. I borrow stock for money. <laughs> uh, don't confuse these poor guys. Just, just tell them you're self-employed. You're, you're an asset manager. I'm an asset manager. That's it. That's all you got to say. The, le the least, the less, the better. <laughs> don't confuse them. Questions begat questions. You don't want to go there. You really don't. Dow is up 151 right now. AMC up 9. Ape down 64. GameStop 32.18. Trying a rally. It's trying. Still down 32. See if that goes anywhere. So far, 653 up 8. ATIP 97.1 cents. Look at the Spire. It's up 9.9 .9 cents to 143 now. Spire, $1.43. Uh, that is, the, I think, the high of the day, I think. Uh, I'll wait for my machine to update that. Uh, that's better, I guess. All righty. Uh, the high of the day, yep, 143. 176,000 shares on Spire. That's all. 176,000 shares is all that's traded. And it's at 143. There's nothing for sale here. Uh, any kind of buying program will run it. Same with Spire, uh, with ATIP, it would run. 69,000 traded on ATIP. We had 500,000 shares of buying come in here in an hour. The thing would be up to three bucks. There's nothing to stop it, but no one's buying it. That's the problem. There, the street is unaware of what is going on on okay beach boy today i picked up my daughter at the train station after a dental uh thing mine bought some groceries all, all before the trading day and uncle bruce it is quite amazing the time freedom writing options allows yep you have a life you have a life when you're in europe you don't worry about writing options until after two o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> so you got all morning to do what you got to do and Get your dental appointment done, get your grocery shopping done, pick up your daughter from the train station, have a bite to eat. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Uh, Cindy Spire has a pop going on here. It's popping. 
Spire up a dime to 143. We love it. Rocket Lab up 14 cents. ATIP up 1.4 cents. Uh, come on, babies. Uh, GameStop 3202 backing off again. The GameStop is backing up again. Um, there, there it is. I'm an asset manager. Now, please be careful with my Picasso. I, I'm an asset manager. I just manage it. I manage assets. Um, I'm retired. I'm an asset manager. Um, the Credit Savage, uh, Bleacher Creature, that's a great strategy. There you go. <laughs> the, Dow up, the Dow up 156. It's up, but not up a lot. Uh, it's uh, reluctant. Yeah, okay, I'll go up a little bit. Uh, uh, there you go. Um, GameStop, $32. Uh, up, uh, down 50 cents. It's backing up again. Here we go. Okay, okay. Um, w. Walters, I cannot wait to get to the Beach Boy level. I can't wait to get to that level. Just keep plowing away. Keep plowing away. It'll come your way. Um, yep. <coughs> what can I say? Spire, 143, up a dime. Go, Spire, go. All I have to say about that. To quote Forrest Gump, that's all I have to say about that right there. We have been on the air for two hours, 15 minutes. I think I'm over my two-hour time frame. Uh, guys, thank you so much for being here today and hanging out with me. Uh, Jennifer and I have to go get breakfast. Um, I'll be back on at 3 o'clock this afternoon for the final hour of the show. Um, what I'm going to do right now is uh, when I say my goodbyes, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to load up the 3 o'clock show and I'll post it. And it'll be on the community tab. So if you find it and you want to talk to each other, you can talk to each other on the next show uh, that is waiting to go live at 3 in the Eastern time. So if you like to do that, you can do that. Totally up to you. But uh, thank you all for uh, being here and hanging out with us. Uh, we have an interesting week going here, an interesting day. And, man, we're going to be into some interesting stuff here. Uh, Credit Savage, yes, I'm retired, but, sir, you're 48 years old. That's right. I'm retired at 48. Uh, don't you wish you were me? Uh, Bleacher Creature, um, Credit Savage, uh, I'm either collecting weekly premium until it's assigned, and if it is, great. Then I start the covered call portion of the program. Susan shops about, hey, I used to skim profits off my long positions. Now if I write a covered call on 100 shares and lock in a contract, I, can I still continue to skim profits off my stocks if I see it go up? Uh, if you've written a call against the stock, you've locked up your stock. That's why you want the premiums to be as high as they can be. That's why you want to be selling pr uh, calls on stink offers. Maximize your money in to maximize your the money you're going to keep. John Anderson, thank you, everybody. You got it, John. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, all of you, for uh, being with me today. We have 190 thumbs ups. Before I say goodbye, do you think it would be possible for you guys to hit the thumbs up button for me? Uh, I need 10 more to get to 200. We love to have 200 plus thumbs ups on any of these shows. Can you guys? Do me the ultimate favor and nail that thing for me. There's 187 of you around. Are there uh, Are there at least nine more available? 191 have come in. I need nine more thumbs ups to get to 200. There's 199 right there. I need one more, and we got this thing done. 201, there it is. We've just broken the 200 barrier yet again. 203, hit that thumbs up for me if you can for me. Pa pad that number. And thank you all for this, uh, for these thumbs ups. It helps the channel get exposed on YouTube a little more. 207 now. Look at that. 17, just like that, have come in overall. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for helping out. 209 now. This is good stuff. All right, folks, I will see you this afternoon. Um, oh, there's one thing I've got to do. That's right. I've just got to do one more thing before I go. Uh, thank you all so much for helping out. Here's some knee emojis to kind of spur the markets on in the direction we want them to go. Neat, 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 neat. There you go. Uh, thank you all for hitting the thumbs ups, hitting the knee emojis, making money in the markets. Thank you for those of you picking up uh, these classes 
I will get you your links. I promise you, uh, you'll get your links shortly. Um, and if you want that four for three deal, fire away uh, that donation to two ninety nine ninety nine US to that PayPal account, and we'll get you the links you want, those classes you want uh, right away. Thank you, everybody. Here are those neat emojis. Pop them up there. That market is helpless. It'll do what you want it to do. Thank you, Larry, uh, for yours. Uh, thank you, Credit Savage, for those knee emojis. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Beach Boy. <laughs> thank you, Mirko. Uh, Cindy, thank you. Uh, thank you, DQ, for the thumbs ups. Everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Bleacher Future, get that money, people. Get that money, people. Absolutely right. Uh, here we go. Karen's here. Pappy J. That's right. You can't stop the knee emojis. The attack is on. It's on. All right, you guys, I'll see you this afternoon at 3 o'clock. I'm going to load up the 3 o'clock show right away if I can here, and we'll get some links out to the 4 for 3 class buyers from this morning. And if you want to do that, let me know. Uh, send a donation and send me an email. Okay, thank you, guys. We'll see you at 3 o'clock. Make money right now. I'll see you soon. Take care.